Welcome back. Let's talk about resource libraries. So similar to other things and how they fit in, in my mind, this one is something that you usually would have in two places. And these two places are SEL and email. So this would be like in Google or we have some kind of lead generation and then we're trying to send them to our resource library page. So Usually I think of it some kind of like, like an icon, right? And then we're going to have our headline and we'll get, this is our explainer. This is our explainer headline and you usually have some kind of graphic to be like, Hey, like, you know, this is our resource. We're going to have all kinds of things here. We might want to have a search bar and we're going to have some kind of tabs or some kind of filter. So this is search. This is filter or tags, you know, categories, whatever, some kind of navigation, some kind of tabs, some kind of way to like sort these out. And then there's multiple ways we can do this. We can also just do it in list form. Um, this is now our links. And the same thing here. So we can have these links or whatever resources they are go straight to like, say this is a link directory, right? This can go straight to the other websites or it can go to a intermediary page. Oops, he's hit the little tree. Um, and then this intermediary tree page would have a little widget, which would then go to the website over here have some kind of information about the website and maybe a video, maybe a blog post style thing about that whole resource. So if this was like, Hey, download these Photoshop templates, graphic templates, you know, video templates, uh, click balls templates or any kind of, uh, resource like, Hey, these are the best books that you should worry about. It could go straight to the website, which is that little guy, or it could go to a, separate little page that's just great for SEO and that would be great so that because that way you end up with like you know 300 pages page website plus you know if you have say this page would be dynamic but then every listing would have this you can control what categories show up here have some kind of filter uh, this would be the more advanced way to do a resource library and I'm thinking about more from an SEO perspective, but you can do the same thing where you have the SEO and it's freely available. And then you do ads on top of your, your SEO, which is basically the opt-in page. And then this, uh, yeah. And then you can also find influencers to find a partner so that you can have featured. Say this one is featured. This would be a featured resource right so now you can sell that you have a whole bunch of people going to your resource library now you can be like hey guys i want to put you right here for you know two hundred dollars a month and then once they drop out you can put a different one and then you can go and then do the same thing and put an ad here with google adwords or anything because you're trying to drive traffic through these pages to here which you either have an affiliate link or something you can also use this inside of an email campaign, right? Where you have an email campaign where you're like, Hey, I want to show you the 15 best resources I use in my email marketing in my whatever, you know, like graphic design and have the emails that go out or just linking to different products inside of here, inside of your resource library that you built. You know, and you can do this like with click funnels or you can code it yourself. You can do all kinds of different ways to build it. But basically you're building a little library that's constantly growing with nicheified niche content, right? So it has to be super, super niche. So if it was dog stuff, like your dog's okay, but think about dog collars or th dog shoes. You know, imagine if it was just a resource library for all the best dog shoes, right? Now you're like, oh, well, how many dog shoes can there be? And well, turns out there's 6,000 uh, or maybe 400 dog shoe links and resources and graphics and stuff that I found, right? And now it's more believable. And you might think, oh, wow, you really 
found everything there is to do with dog shoes or something else more niche, right? So that's the main thing is niche, resource library, how you lay it out is kind of like a blog. You have your search, filters, your links, and explainer. Explainer, this could be like, you know, your hero section, all this stuff. But again, this is not like, you're not trying to do like a call to action up here because really someone coming here, you want them to scroll down. You're doing that same pattern across the page, right? You're trying to get them to click on one of these things, preferably this one, but ultimately one of these things is going to then get to here and what you want them to click on is that, right? Because that's going to bring them the thing. But again, when you do this, and I say again so much as if I already said this stuff, which I haven't, um, this is a tab and this is a tab. This would be a target blank because you want this to go up in a new tab. You want that to happen, especially with a resource link page, because once they're done with this page, they close it. Well, guess what? They're back here, right? So you can do like little sneaky things when they click on this, then this can reload to a different page. It can reload back to this page where it's scrolled down here or show something so that when they do exit that page and they do it, return to this page, there's something, some more content. So if they, if you leave it exactly at this page, they click on this page, they come back and you're like, oh, right, I delete that. Or you leave the same. All kinds of tricks you can do or things you can do, JavaScript. But yeah, so that's what you want to do. You want to make sure it's in a new tab for that one. So that way you're not just sending people to maybe Amazon. Maybe this is a whole Amazon affiliate play. You don't want anybody to just go from this, 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 and then to Amazon in the same tab. Ideally you can, but like, that's just not. So that way we have our website open so that they can come back. Because if there is 400 links, there's lots to do. And that's why you need search and filter. You can also have the search and filter at the top here. And you just encourage them to be always engaging, looking for more things. Same thing with your blog post. Putting in like, hey, these ones are related. Check out our related things. You know, like you thought that one service for the dog shoes were great. Well, guess what? You can also get them custom printed with one of these services. Or, you know, we say you have a fat dog. There's fat dog shoes. Anyways, that is it for the... I almost looked at that. I look at this and I go, hmm. I look at this, I look at this and I go, hmm. Right, so this is the resource library. That's the resource library. And that's how I would design it and that's how I would think about it. So thank you so much for watching.